So, hi everyone, and thank you for being here. My name is Mirav Dean, and this is my colleague, Gomathy Anandan. And we're going to talk today about Women Leadership Cohort. So, before we start, a quick question to the audience. How many of you have been part of a, or are still part of a cohort? That is like a group of people that support each other in, to re achieve a certain goal. Okay. So I think this, uh, this talk is going to be very beneficial for most of you. Um, okay, so we're going to talk about, we're going to give a brief, a brief background and tell you how this cohort was formed. Uh, we're going to talk about the benefit of the cohort. We're going to give you the secret ingredient of how to form such a successful cohort. And there's a key takeaway, one key takeaway. Okay, so how it all starts, started. So um, we, have, uh, we all work in Red Hat, and we have senior leader, Perry Myers, so we're very lucky to have him on the crowd today. <laughs> uh, and remember Perry, we're gonna get back to him afterwards. And Perry has in his group two wonderful, uh, well-accomplished women leaders. That's Gomathy and Kate. And Perry was also mentoring me, so I'm from a different org. And then Perry had a great idea. So he knew all of us, and he knew our background, and he knew they were all, we were all um, at the next level of management. So he figured, why don't I connect the dots and let them know each other? And so we did. And this is basically how our cohort had, uh, was started. This cohort is working uh, extremely well. So just to give you an understanding of what, this, what does it mean. So we meet, we meet once a month, and in this, uh, during the discussions, we bring up to the table very um, important topics. I listed a few here, just to give you um, uh, the feeling of it. So exa one example is to inspire ideas that were previously discounted as too ambitious. So as women, we sometimes tend to not to aim high, but rather to aim low. And this is a place where we kind of took these targets and break them down into something more um, achievable, doable. Uh, another important topic is that we kind of advise each other because um, one of the hardest topic is how to be a mom and have a career at the same time. How do we, how do we manage that? Um, we advise each other. We have the ability to expand the network. Uh, via this cohort. So, for example, Gomathy here is mentoring one of the associate managers in my org, and I thought it was a good a good match because they're both trying to uh, doing the same uh, path in their career before they become a manager. And of course, we require a variety of perspective and share learning opportunities. So, um, in short, this cohort is extremely. And why? Because in the first place, none of us really looked for help or support. To tell you the truth, we were very good at where we were. We're, we're well, uh, we know our job, we're very professional, we're good at what we do. And still, this cohort added something that wasn't there before. So we kind of tried to this talk, reverse engineered, to try and understand why makes it, what, what makes it so good. What, what, what added value does it give us? And it was kind of uh, surprising to uh, profoundly understand this, that what basically lies underneath that is that this cohort helps us to address gender-related challenges together. And in order not to leave you like in this very high-level statement, we're gonna give you some down-to-earth examples, three good concrete examples, and I'm gonna hand it over to Gamathy. Let's go into examples. All right. Let me ask you a question first. How many of you here have felt like self-doubt? You think that you do not have the abilities to do the job that you are doing. There you go. <laughs> Guess what? 
I'm part of that group as well, and that feeling has a name. It's called imposter syndrome. And it is basically you being insecure of your abilities that make you feel that you don't deserve to be in the role that you are in, even though you have all the qualities to be in the role and perform really well. Um, there was a co poll conducted by one poll, which basically surveyed 4,000 adults. Two-thirds of the adults said, uh, two-thirds of women in that group said that they really feel truly confident about their abilities and always had some sort of self-doubt. And the self-doubt most often arose in workplace settings. So imposter syndrome, workplace settings. It goes very well together. How does it, this cohort help me address this imposter syndrome? Basically, they provided the support that I need because I was able to uh, trust Kate and Mirav, and it helped me strengthen my self-esteem. During the meetings, we meet once a month, as Mirav mentioned earlier, and during the meetings, we talk about our insecurities, we highlight each other's abilities, quote examples, hey, by the way, you did that, that's awesome. You know how much that means when you are feeling self-doubt, someone whom you think are really well-established and talented, state that to you in a personalized setting that makes a world of difference. And I hope you are able to have a group similar to what we have together to address your insecurities as well. Let's go to a different example. Women also tie to share, women tend to shy away from self-advocacy and personal branding. I'm gonna quote another study here. You have to bear with me, you're gonna get a lot of numbers now. <laughs> Harvard Business School did a research where they uh, studied 4,000 working adults and 10,000 school-aged youth. In that study, they found out that 62%, that's more or less two-thirds, of the women who women and girls that they studied felt like um, they, they always rated themselves and their abilities far less favorably than the male and boys, men and boys in that group. The researchers were uh, surprised by their finding. So they did more research and they found out that these insecurities or the uh, the way people rate, or women and girls rate themselves less favorably, started at a very young age, as young as being in sixth grade. So that is a huge problem. We have start having the self-doubt and um, inability to uh, rate ourselves for what we are worth. And so they did more research, and they found out that the way they rate themselves less favorably stems from the fact that women and girls think that they have their skills and um, abilities are far less uh, than their counterparts, men and boys. So they wanted to, um, we wanted to talk about this. When we were having one of our discussions, we talked about how we don't promote ourselves, how we don't, uh, you know, empower ourselves and do what we wanted to do. So I'll give you a specific example. When we started talking in the first few months, um, Mirav here got promoted to a senior manager. We, were, we both were so happy for her and we talked about her journey on how she got to being a senior manager. And at that point, I shared with Kate and Mirav that I feel I hold myself back sometimes because when it comes to my career development and progression, because I feel that people might see me being aggressive in when, I, when I warrant or talk for myself, um, and I didn't want to be seen aggressive. And immediately after I shared that, they both crushed those insecurities for me. Again, I wouldn't have shared these, of course I shared it with my family and friends, but sharing with someone who is in a similar role as you 
in a workplace makes a huge difference, right? So what happened after that? We talked a little bit more about what we wanted to do in our career at Red Hat and beyond. And at the end of the meeting, Kate and I came back, came out of the meeting with a concrete plan of what we want to do, how we want to initiate these discussions with our respective manager for the next level in our careers. And we also set a timeline for that. Before we meet the next time, we will have this discussion with our respective managers. You know, what happens is the specificity gets lost sometimes. When you talk to friends, you're like, oh, you need to talk to your manager. Your friends encourage you, your family encourages you. But you don't get the specific timelines, so you don't stick to it. The difference here is, as all very, um, very talented managers, we write down plenty of notes, we capture the notes, and we assign action items in the document. So we both had an action in the document that was assigned to us, which said we talk to our respective managers about our career progression, the next level, to come up with a plan for it. Not to say I want to get promoted, but to come up with a plan for it, because that's the first step. About personal branding. Um, that's another example I'm going to talk about. So we talk about personal branding and uh, branding in general. So I think the discussion started like, oh, I don't, somebody doesn't know me in the different org. And I was telling, oh, I normally do this where I figured uh, if I take some tasks which is not related to my role in my day-to-day -day responsibilities, uh, for instance, I, when I joined this group, the new group that I am in at Red Hat right now, well, it's not new really, I'm, I've been there um, more than two years now, I started running a program, a reward zone program, where basically we distribute rewards for associates uh, to recognize the work that they've done in that specific quarter. And I said I normally take these kinds of, uh, you know, additional tasks or responsibilities just to put my name out there. Um, I've I've learned that when people know your name, they tend to connect better the next time you reach out to them for anything, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be a favor, but it makes the conversation, it makes the relationship much better when you reach out to someone and they already know your name. They're like, in their head, the connection goes on. Oh, this is Gomati, I've talked to her, I've seen an email from her, and then they are much more open to responding to you, or at least that's how I feel, so I figured someone else would feel that way too. Um, so I shared that with Mirav and Kate, and they thought it was a great idea, and they said they would look for other opportunities. That's our way of promoting our self-brand. All right. As I said, build confidence, practice self-empowerment, and personal branding, and hence it. All right. The next myth. Women tend to not have strong networks. I kind of learned something new. I'll show you a visual. I hope everyone can see this well. Um, I did not know this statistic before I uh, started preparing for this presentation. This is a LinkedIn um, research, and based on this research, they say that women tend to have 14 to 38 uh, percent less of a stronger network than men around the world. So it's not one country, it's not one geography, Everywhere, all around the world, women tend to have a weaker network than men. So why is networking so important? Social networks are critical to professional advancement. So let's talk about specific needs for men and women, because they are different, apparently. Again, I did not know that, um, when it comes to uh, creating a network or using your network to your benefit. Men need centrality. What does that mean? Centrality means you have a lot of contacts, you have a huge network, and those, network, uh, those contacts in your network will help you create more networking contacts. So you have a huge network. Men need that. Women also need centrality, but women also need an extra additional thing, which is an inner circle. They need a trusted inner circle to help empower them, support them, and give the little boost that they need to reach out there to their central networks and help them enhance and leverage those networks for their professional development. Okay. So 
So we talked about inner circle. My inner circle is my cohort. Hopefully you all have, and if you don't, create your own inner circles as well to bring those, uh, build those stronger networks. Um, I'm gonna give you an example about this and about networking, how it helped us. Uh, I'm gonna call out another person in our audience now. <laughs> so we were talking in our discussions again, we were talking about our networks and how we know other people within Red Hat in different groups. And um, I think Mirav had that idea of, oh, we should bring in one of those senior leaders, women leaders to our group and so we can raise these questions and get their perspective. And um, Mirav said, we should bring Karen. I know Karen, we, she'll be happy to come to talk to us. And Karen did come talk to us and it was a very, very, very useful session because she, I uh, happens to be in the crowd, <laughs> and um, she answered all our questions, um, I think confirmed some of our beliefs, helped boost our confidence, did everything that we thought she would, and did a little bit more. And after Karen left, we all got together and said, that was really good, that was really useful. Maybe we should try about, think about someone else. And then Kate said, oh, I know someone else from a different business unit, so I'll reach out to her and we'll have her on our meeting next time. And we'll get her perspective from a different business unit point of view. Again, we wouldn't have reached out, I personally wouldn't have reached out to Karen to talk to her, raise my questions, share my thoughts, if not for this network. Um, what else? I guess that's about it. Oh, another visual. One of my favorite ones. So yesterday in our social event, I explained this to someone. I was talking to someone whom I never talked to, and he, was, he asked me, uh, what is your talk about? I was like, oh, it's about women leadership cohort. And he's like, I really don't understand. Uh, I think in 2023, everybody has equal opportunities. What is that we are talking about here? It seems like two backwards that we are talking, still talking about you know, women need additional uh, opportunities and, and so on and so forth. So I told him, you know, the difference is equality and equity. What is equality? Equality is giving equal opportunities, the same opportunities to everyone. That's equality. What's equity? Equity is giving the opportunities that people need, the addressing those gaps along with those opportunities so that whoever is not having the enough opportunity to, whoever has those gaps, those gaps are addressed and eventually everybody is equal. So when there's equal opportunity, everybody has a fair chance at those opportunities as well. I hope those examples were helpful. I'm gonna hand it back to Mirav. Thank you, Gamati. Uh, okay, so I hope that at this point you're all convinced that, that having a cohort is a extremely uh, beneficial thing for you all. Uh, some of you are asking yourselves, okay, so let's say I want to start one. What does it take? So um, we wrote some criteria, but please take it with a grain of salt because this is based on our own experience. It wasn't tested in lab or being researched or anything. So basically we think three conditions should be met. The first one is that you, all the members should have some sort of a common ground. Uh, that could be a similar place, a position at work, that want to go to the next one, similar to what we have, could be around a, a specific goal. So for example, um, a group of people can form a cohort so that they can stand here next year and, and do a talk, because it's scary as hell to, to stand here. Um, so that, that's the first criteria. The second one is that the group has to be small. Uh, we think three to five top, that, that should be the optimal uh, number. And the reason is uh, twofold at first. Some Intimate things are being shared in this in these discussions, so it's very hard to do it in front of a very large audience. So it needs to be uh, small. And on the other hand, it also gives everyone, each member, sufficient time to talk and express themselves. Last but not least is, of course, uh, the technical stuff. You need to have easy means to communicate. Okay, that'd be easy time zone or any other uh, elements of communication. Okay, so. Uh, almost last slide, uh, t the key takeaway, the key takeaway that we ask you to take uh, from this uh, talk. Remember Perry from the beginning? <laughs> so we ask you to kind of be Perry. Be Perry in the sense of uh, do a similar uh, 
Perry played a crucial role in, in forming this cohort. So this is kind of a call out to all leaders uh, to try and uh, connect others into similar cohorts because we believe it's going to be extremely, extremely beneficial to them as it is to us. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs> yes. That's a fantastic question. I'm just going to repeat it for the recording. So we have a question. How about having a man into the cohort? Not necessarily be a part of the cohort, but someone that you can ask questions to and extend the network and get his perspective and get to know us. So that is a fantastic idea. And yes, the, the plan is, I guess, to have some men. I don't think that a man can be a part of the cohort because then something gets lost. There, there's a certain thing of being a woman with women. Maybe there could be another different cohort that like combines men and women, that's, that's a good idea. Uh, yep. Yeah, I think I have a little bit more to add. So as you say, you know, we have plans to reach out to other senior leaders who are not women and uh, bring him, uh, him or a different pronoun to our group. We, it doesn't matter who it is, right? It's the, it, all we want is to learn from others. It could be men, it could be women, it could be any marginalized group. That's the, our goal. Um, the additional point I want to add is the common ground that we had is that we are women, right? So obviously there could, you could form a group which you have a common ground. So it could be a men and two women or someone else um, and they can form a cohort. The key is they have some common ground, some common criteria that they are working towards because that's, I think for us, that's what made this more successful. Go ahead, Yara. Okay, oh, so you want to answer his yeah. question. Okay, go ahead. Do you have one? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. That was awkward. <laughs> Hi, I don't know. What's up? Uh, no, I don't know. You're talking about, you know, you might want to have a men's perspective, right? We work in a very man-dominant field. We always get the men's perspective. So when we find women, it's not like every woman have the same perspective, right? I have my perspective. Gomati has her perspective. When we talk, we're not like, yeah, yeah, we totally agree with each other. We're very different. And I do agree that, yes, we can have cohorts with men too, definitely. We want that. We want that communication. We want that network. But we already have it. We have the men, I mean, I work with what is majority of men, we are like a few women in our team and we're trying to build on that, right? We don't need more, I would say. We want that support from a fellow woman in our team, in our workspace, and I totally agree with you, right? I totally agree that it is important, but it's missing the point. It's missing the point to this talk, in my opinion. I appreciate working with these females and I appreciate working with all the men in my team. And I mean, without the man, Perry, this wouldn't even exist. So the man is already there. So thank you, Perry. <laughs> and I, th I think that's kind of my sum up to my answer. Thank you, okay? yeah. Thank you. <laughs> this is really awkward. <laughs> <laughs> like this. Go ahead. Oh, I have a couple of... Uh, no, okay. <laughs> no, Okay, I saw a few hands. Go ahead, please, at the last row.
All right. So um, I, I don't think there's a question. There's just a, st a statement that you made. So I'm going to repeat what she said. OK. It doesn't have to be. It just occurred to be that our group, you know, formed the way it formed. She's a senior manager. We both are managers. So it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't have to be, uh, you know, similar levels or anything like that. All right, go ahead. So the question is, uh, you work as an engineer, and you don't have a lot of women engineers that work closely or in your group or within your extended network at Red Hat or I don't know where you work from in your workplace. So what do you do in that situation? This is exactly where your leaders play a key role, right? Help you extend your network. I'm going to answer this, and you can add on Mirav after. Um, so I think you reach out to a leader that you look up to in your organization and ask them, help me find other people, other women, other, um, you know, from their own network of contacts to connect you with them. You know, I'm not saying it will work because we are all humans after all. You know, after a couple of sessions, it may work, it may not work, but at least you get that contact, right? So you get that introduction with someone whom you don't know that exists in other organizations. I did, know, did not know Mera was works in a different organization under Karen until I was introduced by uh, Perry to Mirav. So, so essentially you need to reach out to one of your leaders in your organization and I'm sure they will be open to helping you find that contact and form the group that you want to. So if I may add Yes, something. please do. So um, th that is a great question. Um, in, in, and I can just entirely relate to that, but just mind you the similar uh, ratio is I think in women uh, managers because there are a few of us I'm afraid I know so I think the best way would be to kind of find some other uh, software engineers women engineers and then form yourself together and I don't know kind of expand it like the ideas that can come out of this cohort could be great like how do how do we um, go and prepare the next generation like I don't know even from a university but uh, yeah feel free to reach out to us af afterwards so, uh, I'm actually thinking this is something I might want for myself, uh, not, not with the, like the gender angle, but just generally uh, seems like, I mean, I, I would describe it as a group of friends who uh, hold each other accountable, probably, and also show some discipline in showing up and mm -hmm. doing these tasks. So, I'm kind of curious from the social perspective, did, did Benny uh, make a really, uh, like, have a very good view that the three of you would get along? So, uh, how friendly this is and, and how it is to work through that. Okay, so your initial question, uh, uh, your initial question was like, you know, did how did did you did Perry know whether uh, we had common, uh, you know, way of approaching things? Uh, like we had common things that would help us form a group better. And then there was a subsequent question of how are things in terms of do we have differences of opinion or we, do we get along well, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so I don't know if Perry knew or not. All Perry knew was we were all getting new managers under us. So we were going to be new manager of managers. So he said, oh, you guys can learn from each other and so I'm gonna connect you. And he said, did an email introduction to us. That's how, that, that was the key, right? We were, the common ground was we were all going to be new manager of managers. Um, so that, that was the common ground. To answer your subsequent question, which now it's completely blank, yeah, we, we do have different opinions, but it is not like we get into arguments during our cohorts. We raise our opinions and we say, oh, I, I feel differently about this. And I consider Mirav as my friend now more than my coworker, she's my friend now. And uh, same with Kate. So um, I think we get along really well. Okay, you wanna add anything else? Summarize <laughs> it pretty well. All right. Any more questions? I had someone else raise their hands. Five minutes, so there's no more questions. That's the time. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> okay. Thank you for the presentation. Really, I think I have realized that I am my dear woman, but I'm not making fun of it. I mean, there are many commonalities, <laughs> so I feel sometimes very brave. But anyway, I, I like the statistics, and I'm curious what is the strong net worth? Because there was one on the slide. Uh huh. Strong network. So you can define it as um, something, you know, depending on the size of the network. Oh, actually, let me re uh, reiterate the question first. So you would like to know or understand what a strong network means, right? So a strong network is b something that you have. You can count it as number of people. But in my opinion, I think it's how effective the people that you have in your network. So for instance, you need something, you need an opportunity, or need to get a career advice, or you need to uh, you know, get some information that you don't know yourself. There are the, these are the people that you have around you whom you can reach out to and potentially get the information you need. So it's like multiple sources of information who has different perspectives. So if I have to define a strong network, it has to be diverse. It has to be something that is easily reachable. And you are gaining and also providing information to your network. In other words, you are giving as well as receiving um, benefits from the network. So maybe yes, please. Um, I think a strong network would be a bit different because I think it was referred to men in, the, in that context. I think men are more bold in, in reaching out and extending the network and going high far more than women. So this is something that we should improve. Yep. That, did that answer your question? Yeah. Better. Okay. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, so feel free to reach out to us if you have, want to discuss about this. If you disagree with us, we definitely want to hear about that as well because, you know, that's how we learn and we grow. Um, thank you for listening to us and giving us the opportunity to talk. Yeah. Big thank you for our leaders who came here yeah. to support us and the friends and everyone. <laughs> yeah, thanks.